All right, let's talk about another type of technical interview question um, in the ballpark of sort of like mathy probability questions. And this one concerns recursive probability. And this is something that I had never really, um, it, it's sort of simple once you get the hang of it, but it was something that I had never really learned about in a class. And so when you're first presented with a question like this, it can seem very like, strange and not very clear how to solve them, but once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad. Um, so basically, these problems, this is sort of a, a class of problems where you are given some sort of event and you're trying to compute the probability of this event. Um, and they describe this situation and the situation's has conditions in which it will start over. And what that means, um, it will make sense when we go through an example. Um, so let me write this out. Let P be the probability that a particular event occurs. Um, you may be given a problem where you can write an equation that looks like P equals F of P, where F is just some function. Um, and must solve for p. So what I mean by this is that um, I say that there is some probability that this event, uh, or there's some scenario in which um, this scenario that you're discussing will start over. And so what this function f of p does is it sort of, um, it, it explains the particular scenarios that can happen and it also, um, th these include the scenario in which you start over. And when you start, o and so you can think of P as being the probability that the event occurs starting from the beginning of the process. And then this function F of P um, sort of describes the um, probability that, um, it includes a probability that you start over from P, and so that's why there's a P here. Um, again, this will make more sense when we start discussing an example. Um, so, let's see here, you and a friend play a game. And this is not a uh, this is not a question that I've ever seen in an interview or heard of in an interview. It just sort of has a similar structure to other questions that I've heard of being used in interviews. Um, and so if you understand the structure of this, you'll understand the structure of questions of this form. All right, so what you do is you roll a die, which is the singular of dice, which is sort of weird, but um, just because we're not used to saying that, but whatever. So if you roll So let's just um, you roll a die repeatedly. If you roll um, if, if at any point you roll two sixes in a row, you win. I guess you don't really even need a, the friend um, in this scenario. If you roll two sixes in a row, you win. If you roll Oh, any one at any point, you lose 
puts the probability that you win. All right, so let's see here. Um, let's describe our solution. So let P be the probability that you win. All right, so um, one way that, um, especially if you're going through an interview and you're sort of wanting to show your thought process and wanting to sort of think through the solution as you're trying to solve it, um, one thing that um, can be useful is to sort of draw a diagram, and especially for probability questions, um, I find this is really useful. So, and you just do like a tree diagram. So you start at the beginning and you figure out whatever, um, you, you, roll, you roll the dice once. And so um, if you roll a six, then there's a, um, if you roll a six, then you're sort of getting closer to winning. And so something special is going to happen there. Um, if you roll a one, then you lose. Um, and so you'll stop there. Um, but then if you roll a two through a five, then that doesn't get you any closer to losing or to winning. And so you sort of restart the process. So you'll go back to the beginning. Um, so we can draw it out like this. And so here I'll just circle this because this means that we lose. I can just write L here. Um, and then from the six up here, we could either, um, the same things can occur. We can get a six, we can restart, or we can roll a one. And if we roll a one, we lose. If we roll a six, we win. And so this is sort of what the diagram looks like. All right, so let's calculate what P is. So the probability of winning starting from the beginning so we look at these three scenarios in this first branch of the tree here. Um, there is a one in six chance that we lose. And so we ignore that scenario because that doesn't contribute to our probability of winning. Now here, if we restart, this is where the recursion comes into play. Because if you start the process over again, then the probability of winning from this restarting point is P because P is the probability of winning from the very start. And so um, starting um, after this first branch, there is a um, four and six, so a two thirds chance of restarting. So we have two thirds times P. Um, because there's a two thirds chance of this event occurring. And if the event occurs, then the probability of winning at that point is P because you're starting over. All right, so that's um, these two events. And then the third event, we have um, this one in six chance of um, rolling a six. And then from there, you have to consider what happens after that. And so then um, everything else, um, this second branch is going to be all in parentheses here. So from here, there's a one six chance that you lose. And so that doesn't contribute to the equation at all. Here again, there's a two thirds chance that you restart. So here inside this parentheses, we have a two thirds P. Um, because again, P is the probability of winning from the beginning and here we restart. So we go back to the beginning. And then finally, there's this one six chance that you win. And so we'll just add a one six um, because this is the scenario that you actually win. All right, and so then we um, just sort of do a little bit of math here. So when we multiply this one six by one, and, and this is math that you can sort of do by hand, so this isn't anything super complicated. So this one six times one six is gonna give you one over 36. So we're gonna to wanna to write this equation out um, with denominators of 36. So we can write this as 
36 over 36p equals, let's see, our two-thirds is 24 over 36p plus, then one-sixth times two-thirds, that's two over 18. Um, did I do this right? Oh, I think I have an, I think I have a, I might have a, an error in my calculation that I did. Um, but yeah, so um, one six times two thirds is two over 18. No, 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 of course. Two over 18 is four over 36. We have to multiply everything by two. All right, so we have four over 36p plus one over 36. All right, and so then we combine all the, everything with the p in it on the left-hand side of the equation. So we take 36 and we subtract 24, then we subtract four, so we're subtracting 28. So that's going to leave 8 left over. So we have 8 over 36p equals 1 over 36. And so then at this point, it's pretty straightforward. We can just get rid of the denominators because they're the same. 8p equals 1. p equals 1 over 8. All right. And so that's how you um, would go about solving a question like this. Um, we basically let P represent the probability of winning from the start, and then we write this function F, so this whole entire thing here. This would be our F of P. And so we write this out as a function involving P, and it needs to involve P because we start over, um, and then you just solve the equation. Um, so once you sort of understand the pattern for these exercises and once you um, get the hang of it, um, the setup and the calculations end up not being too complicated. Um, the biggest um, real trick for these questions is um, sort of knowing to set the problem up this way in the first place. Um, because again, when you're, whenever you're doing a, um, any sort of test, any sort of math in a high pressure scenario, you don't, you really want to avoid scenarios where you're, um, sort of coming up with clever tricks on the fly because coming up with clever tricks is hard to do even in low pressure scenarios, let alone in high pressure scenarios. So you really want to, um, sort of search for as many exercises as you can and sort of um, try to see what common tricks are used in exercises. Um, and so this is one of the common tricks that comes up um, is sort of recognizing and setting up recursive um, equations for computing probabilities. Um, and so now that you've seen this example, hopefully you'll be able to recognize it if you ever come across it in an interview and hopefully you'll be able to solve the exercise just fine.